It is a classic kind of liberal response. The government has created an enormous problem, so they are taking more action to remedy the problem, which will also <laughs> create more problems. So the state lawmakers are coming up with a plan to taking different steps to help disparities between um, different races of Californians, different income levels of Californians. But there was one in particular that should very much alarm anyone who is a fan of private property. So we have some of the highest cost of living here in the state and state lawmakers are um, proposing this program which would allow for the state um, to own up to 45% of your house. So what this would do is let's say you're a low income Californian, you see the, the housing prices here in the state, you don't necessarily wanna leave um, if you're making under a certain amount of money, you would be able to apply for a program like this. And the, your end of the bargain would be, hey, you get to live in this house. Um, their end of the bargain would be, we own almost half of it. Um, and that's not, that's not a small percentage either. That's 45%. Um, now, a big concern about all of this is um, this really prevents people from um, truly being homeowners. And it gives the government a massive um, edge over you to eventually use against you. I know if anyone's concerned about eminent domain, this essentially gives them um, a lot more leverage to do something like that because they'll own part of your house. Um, this completely targets um, lower income Californians um, as well. So it's it's one big, like you said at the beginning of the show, um, distribution scheme. And I kind of wanted to ask um, Olivia this, what do you think is probably the best solution to handle um, high cost of living? And why is this idea in particular so problematic? With that, that is such a good question. My, my, first, my first question before I answer yours is, with this house owning 45%, would they be able to kick a person out of that house with the government owning it? They haven't worked out those details yet, but if we, if we, if they own that big of a percentage, it's unclear what kind of laws they would be able to pull at that specific point. So this is something that is still a work in progress, but their whole thing is we will own up to ha almost half your house. That's wild. Back to your question, with the high cost of living, I used to live in California. I know it well. It's interesting now living in Arizona. The difference every time you cross over into the state, you can see that the um, gas is always higher where, whenever you go there. Even though we're bordering states, um, you know, everything is more expensive there. Houses, just as you said before. But what I'm thinking is, between these two places that I'm in and even the difference between seeing, you know, Trump and Biden with gas prices going up now in Arizona significantly than they were before. I'm thinking part, uh, more of this is it's uh, California has been overrun by Democrats. And I think that's really the reason that we are having um, high cost of living now. So it, the policies <clears throat> by Democrats. Right, right. So they they pass policies that are for some of them that are truly well-meaning for others of them that are they're just interested in pushing kind of a leftist bent. But, yeah, there are lots of policies that increase the cost of living there. That means that salaries have to rise um, as salaries. Why salaries rise? People are able to afford larger homes, um, then of course, home prices will go up to meet the meet the supply and demand. Mm -hmm. uh, and but they won't then, cut property taxes. They won't do it. They do will what? never do, pro they, they'll never cut property taxes. Oh yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah really. You wanna help people immediately <laughs> slash property taxes. But you're you're exactly right. They'll they will never do it, uh, and it's a it's a disincentive to own a home, which is which is sad. Normally, that's the biggest investment most people make. Uh, it's certainly the largest tangible investment most people make their whole lives, uh, and it discourages that from happening. Um, it it also discourages you from putting down roots. And, you know, in the old days, there was a reason why they had landowners, uh, when, why landowners were the ones who were allowed to vote. They were the ones who were there and had the biggest stake in the yeah. community. 
Uh, and to the extent that the federal government discourages home ownership, uh, they're discouraging people from having skin in the game. Uh, you know, I'm so I'm working this out in my head right now as we're talking, and I'm. I'm trying to understand the difference between this and essentially like Section 8 housing. Uh, um, you know, is it just another form of housing welfare? How do you apply for it? How do you get approved? This, that, and the other. What happens if you bail out on your obligation? Is the, uh, you know, if you just leave in the night, is the government stuck with the rest of your mortgage? Um, can the government boot you out if they decide they want to? I mean, there are an enormous number of really... Um, kind of interesting and potentially scary questions that go along with this. I, I, um, it is a classic kind of liberal response. The government has created an enormous problem, so they are taking more action to remedy the problem, which will also <laughs> create more problems. <laughs>